If you want to convert to sheet metal manually, rather than using the Convert to Sheet Metal feature, you can either design parts as sheet metal from scratch, using sheet metal features as we've seen so far, or you can design parts as regular solids and later convert them into sheet metal parts. You can use the Convert to Sheet Metal feature to convert a solid part to a sheet metal part automatically, or you can convert a solid part to a sheet metal feature manually by using the Rip feature and later inserting bins. Let's take a look at how we can convert this simple thin-walled box into a sheet metal part using the rip feature. The main purpose of the rip feature is to break corners apart, so a part can be manufactured using sheet metal techniques. This will allow SolidWorks to flatten the part and add bends where they're needed. You'll find the rip feature icon on the sheet metal toolbar. Once the command is active, a selection window appears. If you hold your pointer over the selection window, SOLIDWORKS prompts you to select Edges to Rip. These must be internal, linear edges. Later, we'll see how sketches can also be used to define rips. For now, I'll select all four vertical edges. As I select the edges, notice a couple of arrows appear. These indicate what the resulting geometry will look like after this edge is ripped. In the case where two arrows appear, each side will be shortened, leaving a small gap between them. If you click on one of the arrows, the side shown by the arrow will be shortened, leaving a gap only on one side. I'll select different directions on a couple of these edges so you can see the results once the rip feature is complete. You'll notice in the Property Manager there's a Change Direction button. This allows you to select an edge from the selection window and toggle through the different arrow directions, just like I did by clicking on the arrows themselves earlier. Since the rip feature will replace corners with gaps, you do have the option of controlling the size of the resulting gaps. Now at this point, I'll click OK to complete the rip feature. Notice the different appearance of these corners. Some are shortened only on one side, while others are shorter in both directions. This is the result of the direction arrows I selected earlier. Next, let's take a look at an example of using sketches to define rips. Here, I have a thin-walled part. Notice it's currently not a sheet metal part, and it cannot be unfolded because all edges are fused together. I could use the rip feature and break apart three of the four edges. However, I'd like to instead leave the edges intact and create a seam at the center of this face. To accomplish this, I'll create a sketch on the angled face. I'll sketch a line that goes from one midpoint to the other, completely crossing the entire face. Now this is all I need at this point, so I'll exit the sketch. Now I can use the rip feature, but rather than selecting internal edges, I'll select the sketch line. As before, I have to specify a gap distance. When I click OK, you can see the part is split at the sketch line, and the corners remain intact. To complete the transition into a sheet metal part, I'll click Insert Bends, select a fixed face, click OK, and the sharp corners are replaced by bends, and the part can now be flattened.